IMO 2021 International Mathematical Olympiad Problem Number One. So let's see the problem is what the problem is following. Let n be an integer greater than equal 100. E1 writes the numbers n n plus 1 to 2 n each on different cards. He then shuffles these n plus 1 cards and divides them into two piles. Prove that at least one of the piles contains two cards such that the sum of their numbers is a perfect square. Okay. Uh, one of the most important idea in all years of IMO and also another national Olympiad is to consider a small example. For example, here n n must be greater than equal 100. So let's consider when n equals 100. Okay. And the problem says if you divide it into two piles, in at least one pile we have two numbers that their sum is perfect square. So we define a graph that we connect A and B if their sum is perfect square. So if we prove that no one can divide this graph into two parts, that all edges are between these two parts, it, the name of it is bipartite graph. If we prove that no one can divide it to, or no one can, um, the graph, it's better to say, if we prove that the graph is not bipartite, then we can say that if you divide it into two sides, at least in one, in one side or in one part, we have an edge. It means that we have two numbers, that their sum is a perfect square. So, how can we prove that the graph is not bipartite? We know that the graph, a graph is bipartite graph if and only if it, has, uh, it doesn't have odd cycles. So, if we prove that this graph has odd cycles, then the problem will be solved. So, uh, we also can prove that this graph has a triangle a b and c and a is connected to b b is connected to c and c is connected to a now let's find a b and c for the case special case when n equals 100 so the perfect squares that they can be are from 200 so the first perfect square is 225 256 289 324 19 square 361 and we can't reach 400 because they are between 100 and 200 and their sum is at most 399 so we can say that their sum if their sum is perfect square it can be from 15 square to 19 square now let's find a b and c for this case a plus b is 15 square 225 b plus c is this and c plus a is this so here we can find b that b is this plus this minus this, it would be 225 minus 256 minus plus 256 minus 289 over 2 because this plus this minus this would be 2b, so we must divide both sides by 2. And if we calculate this, we will reach 192 over 296, and b is not, or we can say that case is not good. B must be between 100 and 200. So let's consider other one, for example, other arrangement 16 squared this time, this time. But before that, let's consider something that if A plus B is B squared, A plus C, E squared, C plus B, F squared, then 2, if we add up all these three equalities, 2A plus B plus C equals D squared plus E squared plus F squared. So e squared plus e squared plus f squared must be even. And if I consider, for example, the next case, a plus b be this, this, and this, then their sum is not even. So the next case that we want to consider is a plus b be this, b plus c this, c plus a equals this. Let's consider this case. A plus B equals 289, A plus C equals 324, B plus C equals 361. So A is this equality plus this equality minus this equality. It would be, if you calculate that, 289 plus 324 minus 361. This minus this is minus 337, and it would be 252 over 2, it would be 127. And 
by this a and this equality we can find b that is 163 and by last equality by b we can find c that is 199 and a and b and c are between 100 and 200 and we prove the problem for this now we say okay let's generalize this idea if you i if i find uh, a plus b equal 2q minus 1 squared this one 2q squared and this one 2q plus 1 squared like the previous one then we can say the problem is true and also a and b and c must be between n and 2n so by these equalities we can find a equals this plus this minus this over two. it would be this 2q squared minus 4q b would be this equality plus this minus this it would be if you simplify that we will reach 2q squared plus 1 and c equals this plus this minus this over to it would be 2q squared plus 4q now you know that a is this b is this c is this and as you can see we know that q is greater than 1 because these numbers are squares and without loss of because n is between 100 and 200 we also these squares must be at least 2n we can say q is greater than 1 because for example if q is 1 then it is 1 squared a plus b are both of them are greater than 100 equal greater than equal 100 so we can conclude that a is less than b less than c and they must be between n and 2n so if we prove that a is this equality and this equality then the problem will be solved and a is greater than equal n and c is great less than or equal to n it means that by substitution we reach the 2q squared minus 4q a is must be greater than n and 2q squared plus 4q c must be less than or equal to n now let's simplify these two inequalities from first one 2q squared minus 4q minus n must be greater than or equal to 0 and if you write if you solve it quadratic formula and we will reach two roots so q must be outside these two roots uh, the my if we consider minus sign q must be less than that and we know that's not possible so q must be greater than 2 we divide it by 2 2 plus 4 plus 2 n and it would be 2 and from the second one we know that it would be less than 0 if we take 2 n to the other side this 2n to the other side then it would be greater than equal 0 and q is this the roots and since it must be less than 0 q must be between roots and greater than the minus sign it's obvious and less than or equal plus sign minus plus 1 plus and so we found two things q must be greater than equal this less than or equal this we write it again Q must be greater than or equal to this one. We call this one A1 less than or equal to this one. We call this one B1. If we prove that B1 minus A1 is greater than or equal 1, then we can say there exists at least one integer, one natural number between them. And if we replace B1 and A1 here, we need to prove that. We multiply both sides by 2. We reach minus 2 plus 2 square root of 1 plus n minus 2 minus. 4 plus 2 and 2 and if we take minus 2 minus 2 to the other side we need to prove this is greater than or equal 6 and now we raise both sides to the power of 2 it would be 4 plus 4 and plus 4 plus 2 and it would be 8 plus 6 n minus 2 times this times this greater than or equal 36 now if we take minus 2 times this to the other side we need to prove 6n plus 8 minus 36 it would be 6n minus 28 greater than equal 2 times this thing so 6n minus 28 greater than equal this thing we divide both sides by 2 3n minus 14 greater than equal this if you raise both sides to the power of 2 this is equivalent because we know that this is positive and also look here we raise both sides to the power of 2 because we know that this is positive 4 plus 4 n is greater than 4 plus 2 n since n is greater than or equal 100 and let's see here it would be 9 n squared plus 196 minus 2 times 3 times 14 3 n times 14 it would be minus 48 n gray white is greater than or equal 8 n squared 8 n squared plus 16 n plus 8 n plus 24 n plus 16 
and it's equivalent that n squared minus this minus 24 minus 108 plus 196 minus 16 is 180 greater than or equal to 0 and we know that if n is if we factor from n n times n minus 80 plus 180 if n is greater than 180 it would be greater than 0 greater than or equal to 0 and whole term would be greater than 0 and then the problem will be solved for n we know that by the assumption of the problem n is greater than or equal 100 so we need only to consider 100 to 107 for this case as we've considered in smet in a special a small example we found three numbers a b and c 126 163 and 198 so these numbers can be true for n 100 to still 126 you can use these numbers for 100 but here it is needed only to consider from 100 to 107 so we prove this problem for all cases